Hey guys, uh, happy 2020. And uh, if you could see my face, you might notice that I'm probably not really saying that with any sincerity. Uh, 2020 has kind of been a little bit of a weird year. Uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Jim. I am the shop manager here at Paul Component Engineering. I've been uh, in that role for what, probably close to 20 years now. Normally, I have an office way up there uh, with everybody else, but since it's 2020, I am now uh, in zone four, this area right here. Uh, my office is in another room next to a giant saw. Um, and my role, instead of as a shop manager, programmer, uh, designer, cost accounting guy, my role is pretty much shifted to uh, mostly production, um, which is actually kind of fun for me. And I'm learning a lot. One thing that I really am learning is how great our crew is that does the day-to-day -day production. Uh, Bill, Brett, Brianna, you guys all kick butt. Thank you so much. Um, I'm learning ways that I can maybe make some improvements and some ways that things that we do pretty well around here. So anyway, um, one thing about 2020 is that we're all riding our bikes a lot more. At least I have been. I know everybody that I work with has been. So that's, you know, a positive of 2020. We can socially distance. We can stay healthy. I uh, don't have to be near people. Uh, what that does mean, though, is that we're selling a lot of bike parts. Thank you for that. Um, I don't know if you've been to a bike shop lately or tried to buy stuff online, but it's pretty much impossible to get bike parts right now, except for through us. We have parts, we're making parts, uh, we're running seven days a week in production to keep up, try to keep up with demand, um, which is something we haven't really done ever before. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we have parts, we're making them, and one of the things that that has led to is this new machine that Paul bought. This is a Hyundai Wea F400 CNC machining center. It's got a fourth axis on it, which I'll show you guys in a little bit. Um, this is our third one. Uh, super versatile, super reliable, super fast. Um, I love them. We replaced a machine that was about 10 years old with this one. The other machine was fine, but this is just a much better machine. So uh, we went ahead and did that. So it's super fun for me setting up a new machine. So today I kind of wanted to go through what we do to set up the machine and kind of how we make parts. So first thing I want to show you is just the machine itself. Uh, there's a table here. There's the spindle that goes round and round, cuts the material. Uh, there's the control, which has got all the programs in it. Um, it's how we set our tools, how we tell the machine where the work pieces are on the machine. One thing you'll notice is that this machine is basically a clean slate. This has not cut any Paul parts yet. It's, the only thing it's made is parts for itself. So one of the things that I did, which I've been working on for actually a couple of weeks to get this all set up, uh, this thing here is called a subplate. And what this subplate allows us to do is it allows us to have different types of tooling setups on the machine. Um, can range anywhere from, uh, from vices. This machine will take anywhere from three to four vices at a time. If you notice these little, these are pins here and those locate the vices and I can have them in a number of different positions depending on the job we're running. Um, the uh, it also allows us to use different fixture plates, which I'll show you one in a minute, but the fixture plates can replace the vices and uh, make parts that way. We have a rotary fourth axis, which you can't see right now, but we'll show you that and what we can do with that. Um, so first thing, I wanna show you guys some cutting tools. This is a rack of tools. The first job I'm gonna make with this machine are gonna be uh, cantilever perches. These are all the tools that we're gonna need to make those. Um, and they're all in order. They're all different types. There's milling cutters, there's drill bits, there's taps, there's reamers, there's a saw. But I just want to show you guys, um, we load these into the machine manually, but the machine 
changes all the tools automatically, so we don't have to change them manually. We have done that in the past, many, many years ago. Not the most efficient way to do it. But this machine has an automatic tool changer. I wanted to show you just how fast the automatic tool changer works. So I wanted to just show you how quickly, how fast this tool changer is. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you a tool change. Memory, there we go. So you notice it had a what was called a spotting grill in there before. Now it's got what's called a, a, a roughing end mill. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more. And so you notice that's an empty tool pocket. So what I'll do now is I will load one manually. Um, do that. That is what is known in the industry as a big honking drill. So we have a couple of those around here. Um, and so anyway, I will go ahead and do one more tool change. And once you not notice again that we have an empty pocket, so I'll have to load all these 20, 25 tools in before I can run a job. But anyway, that's how the automatic tool changer works and how they're loaded. Wanted to show you guys kind of how we uh, set up the vices on this machine. This machine, like I said earlier, can take either three or four vices. Each vice has two stations. So if we run four vices, we have a total of eight milling stations that we can run, which allows us to get quite a bit of production in. Uh, anyway, these pins here are what locate the vice. Uh, let me show you how these go on there. This is what's called a Curt DL400 double throw vice. And I'm gonna put it right here. There we go. So it just slides right on that pin. If you notice, that's not, that's not going anywhere. It's not even bolted down. So all we have to do is we have four of these little 5 16 screws. And those will hold that vise down. And we can do some pretty heavy milling with that setup. So imagine with this machine we're going to have one, two, three, four of these vices. So lots of uh, production capabilities. Uh, next thing I wanted to show you, let me take this guy back off. Oh, there we go. All right. Put that over here. We have these, uh, a tooling method that we use. It's called a fixture plate. And one of the things that we used to make with the fixture plate, we don't make these anymore and don't ask. These are chain rings. So this would go on here like that. The pins aren't lined up. I'd have to rearrange the pins, but it would, it would line up with the pins. I'd bolt it down. This is what we made a chain ring out of. It's a piece of square quarter inch uh, plate. That would slide in one side. It would machine that out. See all those features? Then I would turn that over, screw that down with that, and it would machine that whole, that whole plate, basically. You get one chain ring per cycle. It took about, I think, 15 minutes to get one chain ring. Anyway, that's another way uh, that we could do tooling, fixture plates. Um, so one of the uh, features of this machine that I alluded to earlier is the fourth axis rotary that we have on here. What that does is it gives us a bunch more locating options for our parts. Um, it's basically like having several more vices on the part on the machine, except for it allows us to rotate the parts around, get at different angles that we can't normally get at. Uh, one thing that I think is kind of a cool fixture is this. Oh, come on. So this is our, our fixture for uh, machining clamper bodies. There's three clamper bodies on here. So what we'll do is we'll machine these features in three vice jaws on the machine and then they'll come over here to the rotary and what happens on the rotary is it'll sit there, it'll rotate around and it will machine some features here. That's a mounting slot there. There's a couple of five millimeter threaded holes for the barrel adjuster and for the adjuster uh, uh, pin, uh, plunger pin. Um, so anyway, I'll show you where that mounts. Mounts right here. Oh, 
Anyway, you get, there we go. So it's just got three little screws that hold it down. Where's that guy? Wrong size. Anyway, you get the idea. So anyway, let me show you. Let me put this in manual. This is a manual control uh, that I can use to, come on, there we go. So it, it rotates the parts around, gets at different angles, um, allows us to do all kinds of work. The cool thing about this, we've had one, we've used one for hubs for years and years. We have, uh, this is the third one of these machines, the second one that we have with, uh, with a rotary. Um, but what it's done for me as an engineer is it's really allowed me to, to rethink how we make parts and how we can get multiple parts off of the machine at the same time, which increases our productivity and hopefully in the long run our profit margin so we can all eat food and pay mortgages. Um, but anyway, so this, this is a fun toy for me to play with. And I think we have rotaries on three machines now and three machines are just vices only. Thank you guys for watching this video. I wanted to let you know a little bit that I was kind of reluctant to do this video because there are some, what I would call, not proprietary, but some things that I worked on really hard over the last 20 years. And it's sometimes I don't want it to get out in public and people are gonna steal our ideas. But I know you guys are totally into this content and it's really my pleasure to do that. Had it's a little bit of arm twisting to make this happen. Thank you, Travis. Um, but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you guys for buying our parts. You're keeping us in business and feeding our kids and ourselves and our dogs. Um, and last thing, we are gonna get to ride again together. It's gonna happen. Look forward to that. Anyway, till next time, I'm Jim from Paul Components. Thank you. My favorite.